Welcome back to the special edition of To The Point, Congressional District 18, the primary debate. Republicans now, Democrats coming up shortly. A brief response to this question. I think you've made your views well known, but bright line expansion on the Treasure Coast. Oppose or support? Mr. Cummings, very briefly. Sure. Uh, I think there are definitely some challenges that stand in the way. And so at this time, I don't support it in its current um, configuration. Dr. Freeman. I oppose it. Congressman Mast. I oppose it. Been one of the biggest things I've worked on as a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. One of our Facebook writers, as I was previewing the broadcast, said we at least want to know their top line position on climate change. A brief response. Do you believe that humans have a large role in climate change, which of course is of critical concern for a peninsula like ours? Congressman Mast. Yes. Dr. Freeman. Absolutely not. You do not believe that humans have anything to do with climate change? Nothing whatsoever. Why it's, not? It's, it's hogwash. Why? Well, we know that... Cite, cite the study you're naming. Well, there's a lot of studies that were turned out to be fraudulent. Cite one of them. Oh, I can't do that right now. Mr. But, Cummings? Go ahead. Mr. Cummings? Sure, I believe that humans do impact our environment. To what degree is still debated? Let me talk to another topic. None of you in your campaigns have talked about a topic that as short as nine years ago was the key topic, a national debt. Republicans, you voted for tax reform. We're going to have trillion-dollar deficits next year. A national debt that's $21 trillion in climbing. The Tea Party's ascendancy was built in large part about a worry about what we're leaving our children and grandchildren. Why has it been off the radar for you, Congressman Mastin? What do you say to one Facebook viewer who said, for all of that that I just described, what's in it for me in terms of a middle-class guy in terms of economics and jobs? But first of all, why have you not brought up the national debt and the huge concern when it was such a big one years ago? This is something that I bring up often. We were sitting at a League of Women Voters uh, mm -hmm. forum recently. I brought that up as one of the biggest issues uh, that we face. But here's how I've addressed it uh, just recently. We had a $1.3 trillion omnibus spending bill go through Washington. The president signed it into law. I didn't agree with it. I didn't vote for it. I thought it was wasteful spending. Uh, different examples in there in that. But I, I didn't vote for it for that reason. I think we need to be more appropriately accountable with the person's dollars, the taxpayer's dollars. Dr. Freeman, your concerns about the same topic. You've not spoken about any of the campaign literature I've seen, nor your ads. Well, we have certain fixed costs in our national budget, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, the military, Social Security. So I think the President Trump is on the right track. He will help us to grow out of our problem with the national debt. If we grow, we, we know from past experience and past cycles that tax revenue increases enormously. And that can move towards a balanced budget for that year, but, maybe a surplus. But neither Bush tax cuts did what you just described, nor did Ronald Reagan's tax cuts either. Why will it change this time? It will certainly move the football in the right direction. It, but it, it has been, I don't, it, it I'm not has saying, been in two prior Republican administrations. Why, well, why briefly would it be different now? Briefly under, uh, under Reagan, we did have some relief, and then it got worse again. I remember. Yes, you're right. But uh, necessarily, a tax cut will move, move us towards growth and uh, more tax revenue. Mr. Cummings, same question. Sure. It cannot just be tax cuts. While that's a positive thing in the right direction, we also need to increase our GDP. And we're starting to see that uh, from the president at a 4% right now, which is a great positive move in the right direction. The other thing that we have to focus on, and I have talked about this at length, is cutting wasteful spending. We recently had a spending bill which basically would uh, cancel out all of the expired programs. And it, almost exclusively folks voted for this, but our congressmen voted against closing down these expired programs and the expense that follows. Very brief response, sir. Certainly. When I vote for anything, I always look at three things. Number one, is it constitutional? Number two, how does it affect our community, the 18th Congressional District? Number three, how does it affect the country as a whole? That bill had provisions in it which would end protection for waterways from agricultural runoff, and I never vote against my district, and that's why I voted against that bill. Mr. Cummings, the topic health care, a pocketbook issue that so many ask about over time. 2.6 million Floridians, no health care at all. 1.7 million on the Affordable Care Act popularly known as Obamacare, many in our own community. Congressman Mast will have you respond. You supported the failed effort to repeal the ACA. They argue that Republicans are trying to savage the Affordable Care Act. What is your response to constituents watching tonight who say, where do I turn, where do I go if I need that kind of help? What specifically is your alternative? I think what we need to do is go back to X. And what I mean by that is we have the greatest health care system in the world. 
We had Medicare and Medicaid for the old and for the poor. We had the VA system for our veterans, and we had almost all Americans covered. I think we need to go back to that uh, original system, but we need to make a few adjustments. Uh, Specifically so, what? Sure. Well, uh, throwing out this thing that if you have a pre-existing condition, that would prohibit you or, you or these kinds of things. When you say throwing it out, you, yeah, you so, want pre-existing conditions covered. Uh, yes. What I'm saying is throw out any provision that prevents someone from I getting see, insurance see, for sure. having a pre-existing condition. Also, maybe we should take a look at some of our low to moderate income folks, perhaps CHIPS uh, programs, and maybe... Uh, allocate some more assets for those. Dr. Freeman, uh, you're, you're aptly familiar with this, with your medical background. Your response to those who say okay. Republicans are, are trying to gut the health care that some need, what is your prescription? Okay, well, it's a mistake to uh, repeal ACA without replacing it, number one. Number two, as a matter of philosophy, we need to start looking at our health care system in this way, that we need to deliver the present day technology to all Americans because I believe all Americans deserve health care. But we need to curb the expensive new technology, both pharmacology and devices, that we're bringing online. We have to make a choice here. It's either continue to go down that road of more expensive pharmacology technology, device technology, or curb that and say, hey, let's give everybody in our country present-day technology, which, by the way, is incredibly advanced technology. Republicans said for eight years, to part of your point, repeal and replace, and when they had a chance to replace, they did not, Congressman, and you were in Congress when that happened. So what do you say to people who said you really didn't end up with an alternative, you failed to repeal it, but you're trying to savage it now? What is we your did pass that replacement through Congress. Let's look at what happened, right? The Affordable Care Act said one size fits all. You can't buy what you want, where you want, when you want, and how it fits your life. But the Affordable we Care Act still in place. It. it was passed, but at the end of the day, didn't muster enough to become so when the, the law of the, the land. The passage of the repeal and replace bill for the Affordable Care Act didn't go through. There are a number of other things that have been going on. Uh, the repeal of the individual mandate, making sure that if somebody can't afford their premium or deductible, the government isn't going to tax them into paying for something that they cannot afford. That's one of the most important things you can do is not tax somebody into buying something they can't afford. We need to give people the option to buy what they want based upon their lifestyle, based upon their resources, based upon what they need, based upon family history. Let people have the options to run their own life, especially when it comes to health care. It has been said that President Trump, the midterm elections will be a litmus test on President Trump. I'd like brief responses to some of these questions. We can elaborate on a few. We'll begin with you, Dr. Freeman. Do you believe Russia colluded in the 2016 election, yes or no? I think peripherally. I think also that Brian has betrayed the conservative base uh, I, and that they won't come out for him in the fall. Let me, to your point, you believe peripherally. The U.S. intelligence this week said that Russia is actively trying to interfere in the 2018 election, okay. 2020. Do you, you're saying what, what I mean by per peripherally, let me, let me explain that. Um, President Trump did not have a secret agreement with Vladimir Putin by any means. But did the Russians do it on their own independently? Yes, they did. Absolutely. I'll put a different question to you, Mr. Cummings. Uh, Trump, President Trump, has repeatedly called the media the enemy of the people. Do you agree with that assessment? And if you do, why? If you don't, why not? And what would you say to President Trump about calling the media the enemy of the people? I think uh, I can only be responsible for my own campaign and how I feel specifically, but I think what's important here is probably the general message, and the general message is the First Amendment is not a license to slander, but it is a license to educate. Do you specifically so. agree with his statement, repeated again and again and again, sometimes on foreign soil, that the media, a cornerstone of the First Amendment, that all of you swear to uphold and protect sure. is the enemy of the people, yes or no? Oh, absolutely not. Dr. I would Freeman? say that the, I'm sorry, I would say that the media is not the enemy of the people, but when the media takes license with the truth uh, and violates that, that trust that's entrusted to them, perhaps that could be viewed that way. Uh, Congressman Mass, President Trump has also said uh, just uh, this past week, he's backed off a little, he doesn't mind shutting down the government for border security and his wall. Now he's backed off of that a bit. Do you agree that the government should be shut down for border security and the wall that he I wants? don't want to see the government shut down at all. That means that functions aren't being served, veterans aren't getting served, people aren't getting checks. Things need to continue to happen. But the American people voted in a president that promised to secure the southern border. This needs to happen. We vote 
voted on legislation to go out there and fund that wall along with a number of pillars for his immigration policy from chain migration, visa lottery, E-Verify, border security, DACA, and a and hundred other issues. And these are things that need to be addressed. Should the Mueller probe continue, yes or no? I think it needs to be put up or shut up. Dr. Freeman, should the Mueller probe continue to whatever its conclusion is as deemed by Mr. Mueller? I think we should put a time frame on it. It can't go on forever. Mr. Cummings? I think it should be expanded in one direction, not with regards to the president, but recently the indictments that surfaced. Uh, I think some of those things revealed some troubling things, including perhaps our congressman here today. We have a final minute or so. Yeah. As viewers watch and they compare and contrast, they're going to have a choice pretty soon, say, they don't seem necessarily, at least in some cases, altogether far apart on some issues. How do I make my choice at that gut level? What do you say to them? Well, like I was saying just a minute ago, with regards to that, and I didn't get to complete a thought, so I'll finish that sure. and then address your question. In the indictment on page 16, it describes a congressional candidate in 2016 that sought out a Russian agent named uh, Guccifer 2.0. Politico has picked up a story which indicates potentially it could be this congressman. And I think we really, uh, if that is the case, that should be something where the congressman would have to resign. I think we should expand that part of the investigation entirely. Congressman Mast. It's not me. I would encourage the Department of Justice to release whoever that is. Uh, it'd be great. Then uh, Mr. Cummings could stop referring to me in this probe. Why, why you over these two opponents? Look, I already told people, I vote, whenever I vote, I look at three things. Is it constitutional? How does it affect my community? And how does it affect the country as a whole? And what that's resulted in for me is having of the 435 members of Congress, the 32nd most bipartisan uh, voting record that exists out there. That's how I try to do things. I try to represent everybody in this community on those three pillars. Dr. Freeman, uh, competitive race here. Uh, why, why should you be separated from the PAC on August 28th? Well, look, folks, uh, Brian has betrayed the conservative base and if the conservative base won't come out for him in the fall, he will lose the fall election. Therefore, a vote for Brian Mast is a vote to lose this seat to the Democrats. Gentlemen, we thank you. Uh, Mr. Cummings, very final quick thought. Sure. Very, very quick. Sure. Number one, I'm a local. Number two, I'm not a man of talk. I'm a man of action. And I think that is the most important distinguishing factor. And lastly, I'm not a person who will make 180 degree changes on my major campaign promises. I will keep my promises and you can trust me. Ten seconds. Mr. Mass. I'm honored to represent Florida's 18th Congressional District every single day. And as we always say, we wish we had four hours with these gentlemen to talk about the issues even more in depth, but we gave you a sense, at least we hope, of that, and we'll continue to till August 28th. Next up, the Democrats. Please stay with us.